Hi, this is Jeffrey Reddick, creator of Final Destination. Greetings, Slashaholics. This is David Bergantino, author of the Freddy Krueger's Tales of Terror books, the Bard's Blood Horror Shakespeare books. Hey guys, this is Jason Brooks, Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Vengeance. Hey, this is Slasher Pepper. Hey everybody, it's CJ Graham, Jason, Friday the 13th Part 6. This is William Patterson, known to Friday the 13th fans as Eric Morris. Hi, this is Deborah Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 5. Hey folks, this is Adam Marcus, director of Jason Goes to Hell and Secret Santa. <laughs> Hello, kitties. This is John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. Hi, this is Kane Hodder. Better known as Jason from Friday the 13th, Victor Crowley from Hatchet. And you're listening. You're listening. And you're listening. And you're listening. I just want to make sure you guys know you're listening. You are listening. And you are listening. And you are lucky enough to be listening. Okay, boils and ghouls. You are listening. You are listening to the 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. The 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. To 80s Slasher Librarian. To 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. To the 80s Slasher Librarian. Keep listening, or I'll kill you. So you chose to try to convince Harry to leave the bins at the front loading area, without telling him why. Here's what happened. Harry, you say, if you put the bins out on the back road, we won't be able to watch the vandals. If they're in front, at least, we can see if someone's, you know, tampering with them. Forget it, says Harry. I'm not putting them in front, and that's final. You know what that tone of voice means. Getting the fruit out by the train is not going to be possible unless you betray the secret of the crew. And you know you can't do that. There must be another alternative, you say. Harry looks over at you. I wish there were, he says. Suddenly you have an idea. Harry, you say. If we can't get the crop to consumers, let's get the consumers to the crop. What do you mean, kiddo? Leave the bins in the orchard. When the pickers are done, you have a peach party right here on the farm. I'll make up posters and put them up in town, and we can hand out flyers. All the motels and campgrounds can put them up. A grin slides over Harry's face. Mrs. Winters can get some of her friends together, and they can bake peach pies. And we can make peach ice cream, you add. And set up tables on the lawn. It's a great idea, kid. We'll have flats of peaches for sale for people to take home for canning. We may not move them all, you say to Harry. But we'll sell a lot, and we won't have to rely on the truckers that way. That night, you let the crew of the ghost train know of your change of plans. The next few days pass in a flurry of preparations. You and Harry have targeted Saturday as the day for the Westlake Peach Party. On Saturday, you're up before dawn, setting up booths and picnic tables and benches. The first people arrive at 9 o'clock, and from then on, cars line the road to the farm as hundreds of people come to the party. By the end of the day, they have consumed bushel after bushel of peaches and carried off hundreds of flats of the golden fruit. When the last car is pulled away, you and Harry sit down at one of the picnic tables. I'd say that was a successful party, Harry says, grinning at you. By four o'clock, I had enough to make the back payments on the mortgage, and I think I may even have enough to buy back the acreage from Naldo. That option was included in the sale provided I could come up with the money within 12 months. He looks over toward the front dock. Did you hear something? A train whistle? Probably just the wind, you say. Luckily, Harry doesn't see you smiling in the dark, as you glimpse the faint yellow headlight of the phantom train coming through the orchard. The end. Well, once again, it looks like your choice has led to a happy ending. But... There's several endings in this book, and this is just one of them. So why don't you go back and either uh, see what would have happened if you had called the doctor to try to change Harry's mind, or you can go all the way back to what originally led you to this ending and uh, follow Belinda instead of the train on that fateful night when you first saw it. The path awaits. <laughs>